Hey guys, so this video is brought to you by Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. If you guys are interested in learning how to code and are interested in going to a boot camp, um, check out Dev Mountain. The link is in the description tab below. Hey guys, so in this video, I'm just going to show you an example of how to get started with PyQt. Specifically, I'm on a Windows machine, but you can follow along with other um, systems. It doesn't matter. Now, PyQt is actually a project uh, that's written in Python, but it's a wrapper around the popular Qt um, GUI toolkit that a lot of software is, de is developed in. Um, there's all kinds of software that's actually been uh, written using Qt. Uh, like literally these major companies are using Qt. So Qt has been around for a very long time. It's cross-platform. Um, it's not like Windows.net development for you know Windows Forms applications, things like that. Um, th this is truly cross-platform, has been cross-platform for, for quite some time. So it works on Macs, Linux, uh, and Windows. Whereas Windows.NET Framework used to just work on Windows, obviously .NET Core is now here and it's starting to work cross-platform, but there still isn't the same amount of like Windows Forms. Like even to date, Windows Forms, I do not believe works on um, you know, Linux or, or, or Mac or anything like that. Now, I know that they just announced on .NET Core 3 that it was going to be bringing Windows Forms support, but I believe that only works on uh, .NET environment still. So uh, anyway, uh, that's really the whole point is that Qt has been around and has a large market. I would definitely recommend Qt over PySide, um, or even though PySide uses Qt, there's there's a, a less restricting license, and it's just easier, I think, to just download Qt, download PySide, or I'm sorry, PyQt, and uh, and just avoid PySide probably. That would be my recommendation. But you can use PySide as well if you want because it's still using Qt. The reason why I don't recommend it, though, is it's not as quick to adapt to the latest standards. Like when Qt 5 came out, um, PyQt was able to adapt to it with its larger community within like six months. Whereas like PySide, even to date, I, I don't think has full um, Qt 5 support. And it's been like two years at least. Um, so anyway, that's the reason why I recommend PyQt if you guys are going to do Windows uh, or any sort of forms application or desktop application development using Python. Hey guys, what's up? So let's go ahead and get started. And um, what we need to do is download um, Qt. Qt is the framework that we're going to be using with um, PyQt. But go ahead and download this now. We're going to be using the open source version, which is free because um, I am not buying this. Anyway, let's go ahead and click download and get this installed. All right, there we go. All right, so we're going to follow the basic Windows install. I'm going to go next. Now here you have to actually do um, enter in your credentials and everything. So that kind of sucks. So we have to log in and register. So I went ahead and created a new account. I'm going to sign up. All right, so now we're at the uh, sign up screen. Go ahead and click next. Now this is going to take a while, so obviously I'll be pausing the video. All right, so now that that's downloaded, it, um, I'm just going to install it into the default directory of Qt under the C drive. And I don't need any of this uh, alpha stuff, really. I'm just going to go with uh, the default. And we've read the agreement. And now we're installing. All right, so now that that's installed, let's go ahead and launch the Qt uh, creator. All right, so now that that's working, make sure you guys have Python installed on your machine. If you open up a command prompt, you should be able to type uh, Python, and that should actually execute. So, All right, so that's... um. Anyway, just make sure you have Python installed because you can't proceed further without it. All right, so next I'm going to open up a command prompt, and it doesn't really matter like uh, where this directory is, but I want to go ahead and in install pyqt5. So I'm going to use pip to do that, so I'll pick, say pip install pyqt5. And once again, you should have pip working on your machine if you um, if you installed Python, you have it added to your path, and you're able to execute it like I, should, I just showed you. All right, so hopefully yours installed without error. And if it did, um, we can go ahead and proceed to the next step. We need to have a text editor that we're going to be writing our code into. So I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code. And here I have Python extensions installed. And uh, the, the Python extensions allow me to be able to debug my code. And you, you probably want to actually have this same Python extension installed on your machine. But this allows me to be able to step through my code here and, and, and uh, a lot of helpful features, and it's all free to use. So 
PyCharm is like the default editor. If you guys are using PyCharm, that's fine. But if you're not using PyCharm and you don't want to pay for the license, uh, then definitely check out VS Code and um, check out some of my tutorials on actually getting started with Python for setting up Visual Studio Code the way that I have it right now. So what I've done is I've created a folder that I'm going to actually put all my code into. And that's in my projects tutorial Python PyQt folder. Now yours can go anywhere you want. It doesn't really matter. But I opened up the editor to that folder. So that's why I'm telling you. Um, so now when I go ahead and add a new file, then um, you know, that's where it's adding it to. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and add our first file. Um, right click, say new file. And we're just going to call this app.py. And inside here, we need to import a few things. We're going to in import the sys library, which is a standard library from Python. Um, now we're going to go ahead and import PyQt, um, some of the stuff that we need from PyQt. Um, and now another thing with PyQt I wanted to mention with Visual Studio Code, if you follow along with my Python tutorials on setting up Visual Studio, you're going to get all kinds of IntelliSense that's going to help you be able to figure out what is available to you. So like when I say from Py and I start typing PyQt, you can see that it, it automatically selects that first. So if I click Tab, it's automatically going to you know, uh, fill that in. So then I can say dot, and then from here, I'm going to say like QT uh, widgets. But you can go through here, and you can see that all these different things that you can import. Uh, but Visual, Visual Studio Code gives you that ability with the Python extension. Once again, it's all free to use, so um, that's why I recommend it in these tutorials. All right, so let's go ahead, and from there, we want to import the Q application, which is going to be the main QT application. Uh, for PyQt, and then we need a Q, uh, T, our Q widget is what we need. All right, so from here, let's go ahead and define our uh, app. We'll just say app, and uh, here, this is just going to be a function in Python, so we'll say app. Uh, you know what? We'll say my app equals Q application, um, and then pass in the sys.arg value. So that way, if we want to pass in arguments to our application, if we're executing it from uh, you know, wherever, whether, whether it's the command prompt or even using Visual Studio Code to execute our Python app, you can pass in arguments to your application to make it behave in a certain way. So that's why we want to um, take in that, that system.argument value. All right, so now let's go ahead and create uh, our first widget here. So we're going to use the Q widget that we just imported. And I'm just opening and closing parentheses. Um, let's set the title on this. So um, if I say set title, even if I just start typing like title... Uh, well, no, this thing's not that smart. Okay, so set window title. So there is some sort of like advanced searching going on because obviously I didn't type set window title and it found set window title. So there, there is some searching like that going on. It's not going to be perfect or whatever, but it is very helpful because like I said, I can press tab and just fill that in. Uh, and then here we can say testing this mug. All right, and then once we do that, we want to obviously... Um, go ahead and, and show that widget so that's what we're going to do and then and just for the quick and dirty let's go ahead and execute app um, so i'm going to just call it as the function that it is now if you want to go ahead and debug from within python let's go ahead and uh, or from within visual studio code which i suggest click on this debug icon and then over here on the right you're going to say uh, it's going to add a configuration option that's fine so now it adds python so i want that selected um, then I, if I have this file open, I click play, it's going to go ahead and execute my file. Now, by default, it stops on the first line of code. You can disable that in the settings if you want. And if you wanted to do that, you can go into the VS file, go into launch.json, say stop on entry and change that to false. Um, but I actually like that it stops on entry. That's fine because I can step through it line by line, uh, see what's going on, see where it blows up, things like that. Um, so now let's go ahead and execute this. And if everything goes well... This thing is going to actually fire your application and close very quickly. And you guys probably didn't see that, but let me go back. See if you can see at the bottom of my screen, this thing, uh, watch. Yeah, just very quickly. If you saw at the bottom, I'm not actually, you guys can't see that. I'm sorry. I don't have that screen part showing. Anyway, what's going on here is that the application is actually firing and closing right away. So what you want to do is you actually want this thing to be in an infinite loop. And that's how like game engines uh, and a lot of these very fast paced um, frameworks work is they're just in these infinite loops and they're written in C and, and, and with QT it's written in C. So it's very, you know, very highly efficient memory management and things like that. Uh, but anyway, it's just an infinite loop. So 
that's the way your application runs. And, and it, right there, it went through the first iteration and just bounced out. So what we want to do is say, um, only exit if you call the app um, exit function. So otherwise, just keep executing in your end, endless loop. Um, now this exec um, execute, which is uh, short for ex execute, uh, is it has the underscore on there because there's actually a built-in execute method from within the Python uh, library and language, so they couldn't use that, and that's why the PyQt library actually uses the underscore there. But um, I simply, I simply put, this is going to keep it in an infant loop so that the program just proceeds. Now, if we go ahead and play it, um, you will see that the icon will now show up at the bottom and it will stay uh, open for you as soon as you let the code proceed. Oh, and you guys probably noticed that bug here. Um, I didn't call it my app because I called my function app. I didn't want to call like a variable from within the function name, so I called it my app. My bad. Uh, it actually tried to warn me of that error, and I didn't even notice. Um, anyway, that's just programming for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and play it again. This time you're going to notice that the um, editor is going to pop up, and it's going to stay open this time. And we can see here that we have the application running and we have our title testing this mug inside of it. So this is our first PyQt application. It's it's written in Python. It's using the Qt library, which is written in C++. So really the Python Qt uh, is really just a wrapper around that, that framework and that library that allows you to interact with it. Um, but you can do so using Python code, which is um, you know very easy, at least compared to other languages. So obviously, PyQt is actually capable of displaying much more than just a, uh, a GUI that we just saw. In this uh, particular case, I, I downloaded this code. Um, it's uh, free open source code, but it's for a tic-tac-toe game. And if we go ahead and we execute this, so you can see that like you get quite a bit more complicated as you start adding in widgets and buttons and everything. There's going to be a lot of documentation you got to look into. You're not going to be an expert in GUI development overnight. In fact, this stuff really takes um, years to be a master at it and um, it doesn't mean that you can't build basic programs like this this program here uh, I mean it would take probably anywhere from weeks to months to write probably and get it right but um, you know depending on how much time you have and things like that but let's go ahead and run this program here and see what see what happens all right so here's the um, graphical interface you can see obviously we have different colors and we can change the scheme and everything so uh, that's much cooler than what the previous example was showing so now that we've done that let's go ahead and select um, alright that was a little bit of a glitch there wasn't it alright let's do that alright so apparently the, he designed it in a way that you cannot beat this thing so all you can ever do is is push it to a draw definitely has some sort of a like glitchy type of initial load on the oh look it wasn't smart enough to go for the win all right yeah so it's it's obviously a flawed program and you guys would have to spend some time debugging that but that's weird so in the in the dark theme i noticed that there's some sort of like delay but if i start over and do it on a light oh there's a delay there too all right never mind i wonder if it's a delay just going on that one top one let's try this No, it's just slow. All right, anyway, that's interesting. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Make sure you guys check out the description tab below. I'm going to put some links in there to some um, useful documentation for getting started with PyQt from here, and then also you know, adding some, uh, some book links and recommendations as well uh, in the description tab below. Th so thank you guys for watching. Have a good day, and uh, take care. Bye.